give the floor to Ms. Valora Chitaku. Thank you very much. Honorable Mr. President, Honorable Members of the Security Council, Honorable Special Representative of the Secretary General, ladies and gentlemen. It is a great honor to be here with you today to represent the youngest democracy in southeastern Europe. We have gathered here only days after we all commemorated the, uh, the 100 years of the end of the First World War. As the stories of the few remaining witnesses of this dark chapter of humanity, human history recently reminded us, a steep price has been paid for freedom and peace in our old continent. The aftermath of the Great War also reminds us that peace is not sustainable lest it is completed by justice. It is no coincidence that before the dust of this terrible war was settled, our continent would be hit again by peril of unprecedented proportions in the form of the Second World War, causing staggering loss of human life. While the nations of the Western Balkans were occasionally protagonists of this conflict, more often than not, we were a battleground, a stage where ideals crashed, nations brawled, lives were cut short, and dreams gutted. Following the World War II, a most unfortunate course of events would lead our region and my dear country, Kosovo, to become the arena of the last war in the European continent. That is a war I remember all too well. Myself, along with one million Kosovar Albanians, were dis displaced, forced out of our homes as part of the ethnic cleansing campaign carried by the Serbian military forces. One million refugees scattered, 20,000 women raped, tens of thousands killed, many still missing. The wounds of war cannot be healed easily, especially when the aggressor, the Serbian state, continues to refuse to take responsibility for its actions. Does anyone believe that peace in Europe would have been possible if the perpetrators of the First and Second World Wars had not been held accountable for what they transpired? Can anyone seriously contend that it would have been possible for the world to move on if the instigators of these wars would have had insisted on moral parity? There was no moral parity in the First World War or the second one. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no moral parity in the Kosovo War either. There is an oppressor and the oppressed. And we are all actually aware of who the oppressor is. Unfortunately, just recently, Serbian president visited Kosovo. Instead of using the visit to send messages of peace, Serbian president praised Milosevic, the person in charge of instigating the most terrible uh, uh, tragedies in Europe after the World Wars. Yet, we as Kosovars refuse to be defined by our painful past alone. Instead, we choose to identify ourselves with our capacity to build a better future. We are not yesterday's victims. We are today's champions. We are the nation of Mylinda, Distria, and all the young women who have elevated Kosovo to the highest piedestals of the Olympic by relying slowly on their own 
abilities. We are the nation of youngsters who refuse to accept failure, who when given the chance to perform, raise the bar for everyone else. We are a young republic that has been recognized by the majority of the free nations of the world. We are relentless and resolute in repealing every desperate attempt of our northern neighbor to undo our accomplishments. And should they try, try they will undoubtedly fail. Kosovo is one. And the president of Kosovo has the legitimate right to visit any part of Kosovo without asking for permission by anyone. There was no incident the day President Saatchi visited Uimani, as K4 confirmed. The incident unfortunately happened the day after when the Serbian bar owner that offered coffees for the president and his team was attacked with a bomb by Serbian parallel structures in the north. Ladies and gentlemen, I also want to take this opportunity to thank all the Caribbean countries that have reconfirmed their recognition of Kosovo's independence and sovereignty. On behalf of the people of Kosovo, I also want to humbly express our gratitude to you, each and every one of you sitting around this table, for everything you have done for the people of Kosovo. Dozens of statements and resol resolutions passed by this chamber made Kosovo a better place, and you were our voice in our darkest hour of need. However, ladies and gentlemen, we need to acknowledge that the world has changed still, since. Kosovo has changed. It is no longer 99, it is 2018. Kosovo has moved on and it is long overdue for this honorable chamber to do the same on the matter of Kosovo. UNMIT is not a peacekeeping mission anymore, and it's certainly not an administrative mission. The most instructive illustration of the point I'm trying to make and convey is the Security Council Resolution 1244 itself. I urge you to go back and read it again. Read it and you will be baffled to find that it refers to an alternative reality, to a world that ceased to exist long time ago. Kosovars as a people have been in the receiving end of the UN's helping hand. Believe that this, or, but we believe that this organization's resources can be put at a much better use in offering solutions to more troubling problems and crises around the world. As far as Kosovo, Kosovo is concerned, I implore you to consult the ruling of the International Court of Justice, which, may I add, uh, was written upon the request by none other than Serbia itself. The ruling is precise and unambiguous. It states that Kosovo did not break any international law when it declared its independence one decade ago. These facts, these realities, are indisputable and irreversible. They will not change now or ever. Kosovo is independent and it is here to stay, now and forever. These sessions do not help peace. These sessions do not help dialogue. Unfortunately, this chamber is being misused, is being turned into, into a theater, a platform to fuel our own domestic audiences is being used and misused for our 
own domestic audiences, and we should not allow that. Kosovo has undergone a process of painful growth through which it has come to realize that independence is not self-sufficient. While we rejoice and take immense pride in the individual accomplishments of our champions in sports, arts, and science, our institutions have a long way to go in order to meet the rightful expectations of the Kosovo people. Our government has to do much more to provide higher, higher quality of education, better wel welfare, and more opportunities for its people. It must also go extra mile in combating corruption, nepotism, and other negative phen phenomena that plague our young republic. However, while some battles are ours to fight internally, other challenges we will only be able to meet if we are completely integrated in the global community. Kosovo cannot be expected to effectively battle transnational crime if it's not part of Interpol. Kosovo cannot and should not be a black hole in the middle of the European continent. We are prepared and willing to, he to help make not only Kosovo, but our entire region and Europe at large safer for its inhabitants. The Kosovo police, and here, ladies and gentlemen, UN should take pride because you helped us establish Kosovo police uh, 19 years ago. Kosovo police meets all conceivable criteria for a credible partner in the fight against transnational crime. They have already helped foil international terrorist plots and crucial violent extremist uh, groups. They have also signed over 80 bilateral agreements of cooperation with counterpart law enforcement agencies around the world. However, in order to become a proper contributor of regional and global security, Kosovo must become a member of Interpol. That is what membership is about. And frankly speaking, I don't know how on earth such an outcome would be a loss for our neighbor. I really don't know. This matter is not a zero sum, sum game, quite opposite actually. In this day and age, it is irresponsible to pretend that our nations are not deeply affected by what happens beyond our borders. We should view our growing interconnectedness as a reason to increase cooperation. The fact of the matter is that those who obstruct Kosovo's membership in Interpol are implicitly aiding organized crime. It is evident that the only parties who stand to benefit from keeping Kosovo out of Interpol are criminals, drug cartels, and terrorists. The question you must ask yourselves is, do you really want to be on that list? The same principle applies to the establishment of Kosovo Armed Forces. First and foremost, I must emphasize that Kosovo has not engaged in building an army with the intention of threatening to fight or invade any land. That's not something we do. We are actually transforming the mandate of our existing security forces in order to make them compatible to contribute to regional and global security to the full extent of their potential. Our soldiers and officers have excelled in every single international competition they have participated in, proving that they are ready to give back. Moreover, we are proud to have the second most diverse security force relative to all NATO members. In Kosovo, we perceive our diversity as a source of strength. 
It is an attribute we cherish and want to preserve. Hence, it is concerning to see Serbian members of Kosovo security forces be subjected to intense campaign of intimidation that are not limited to the members themselves, but affect their families as well. The Serbian state and its proxies have left no stone unturned in their endeavor to stop the process of transformation of KSF. But let, ladies and gentlemen, let me be clear. No other state spare Kosovo, no other citizens but the ones of Kosovo have veto power of the establishment of our armed forces. This issue is a matter of a sovereign decision, one which Kosovo shall conclude soon. And again, allow me to be completely candid. This is not something which we will ever dialogue with Serbia about. Also, as you know very well, this decision is in no way in a violation of 1244 resolution. While we are on the topic of the dialogue, I feel it's necessary for me to reiterate on behalf of the government of Kosovo that our country remains committed to the fulfilling of all the agreements previously agreed in Brussels with Serbia. However, as the expression goes, it takes two to tango. And Serbia is not holding up its end of the bargaining. It is consistently, it has consistently failed to deliver on almost everything that we have agreed upon. From the energy agreement, from the disregard to the energy agreement, which is costing Kosovo millions on annual basis, to, to its unwillingness to recognize Kosovar diplomas, and many other matters that are hindering normal interactions for citizens in both our, of our countries. Furthermore, Serbia has been in violent breach of the TEFTA agreement with Kosovo, dumping its products in order to destabilize our markets. As such, Kosovo's imposition of 10% tariff on Serbian products was unavoidable and is both an economically and politically sensible measure. Our Minister of Trade and Industry has sent letters, tens of letters, to his counterparts in Bosnia and Serbia, letter that, letters that were never answered. Of course, this brings us back to the necessity of the dialogue with Serbia. And we all agree that dialogue is the only path forward for our two countries. Nonetheless, it is crucial for us also to agree on what this dialogue is and what it will never be about. This dialogue is not about debating Kosovo's right to exist as a free nation under the sun. This dialogue is principally and exclusively about peace, reconciliation, and mutual recognition. As such, the dialogue will only have meaning and produce results if we decide to speak in earnest with our domestic audiences about the process in Brussels. Beyond agreements and papers signed, it is essential that our neighbors begin to treat us as human beings, equal in every dimension, endowed with the same inalienable in, in rights and freedoms. Dialogue is very important, but we decide in Pristina, we decide who represents us, not people in Belgrade. We are proud that we represent a generation that fought Milosevic. Limay was acquitted twice from the Hague Tribunal. And we in Kosovo very calmly can look back 
at our own cost and not be ashamed of it. Only two months ago, an 18-year-old boy from Kosovo was beaten and hospitalized in Serbia because someone on the streets of Serbia heard him speak the Albanian language on the phone. Thankfully, this time he survived. Not long ago, an infant, a baby, was about to die because Serbian air traffic control refused to grant a permit for the use of its airspace to a, plan, to a plane that was due to land in Pristina. Ladies and gentlemen, indulge me for a moment and think about this. Serbian air traffic control officials refused to grant a permit for the use of airspace by a plane because it was headed for Pristina, even if that meant saving the life of a baby. This behavior is beyond comprehension. Not to mention the dozens of buses with Kosovo Albanians that are attacked with stones as they pass through Serbia because Kosovo was their destination. Or the Kosovo artists and scholars that are banned from entering Serbia in the first place, although the purpose of their travel to Belgrade is to promote peace and dialogue. Such issues transcend politics. However, they are exceptionally more hurtful when the state is an accomplice. An innocent infant was about to die in the sky this September because Serbian authorities refused to grant a simple request by an international aircraft operator. Ladies and gentlemen, we can agree and disagree on various and numerous counts, but we cannot and we will not discuss placing a price tag on human life. There are no circumstances that can justify this horrendous notion becoming the subject of negotiation. In fact, it is shameful that an EU candidate country is, using, is utilizing such despicable tools to make a political point. An agreement between states is meaningful and sustainable only if it is an agreement between people. If it brings about a more secure peace and a better living standards for those involved. Not if the effect arches the other way around. Our neighbors in the north may have their doubts. However, we in Kosovo know exactly where we stand, where we're headed, and where we belong in Europe. We are reminded of this every day by our brave and courageous journalists who work fiercely to hold our politicians accountable. We are cons constantly reminded of this by our sportsmen and women, more so by women, who defy the odds and bring golden medals back home. We are reminded of it by our, by our young and vibrant youth that excels in science and technology, exploring new frontiers and experimenting with cutting edge innovations to find answers to the questions of the future. We are reminded of this by brave women like Vasfie Krasnice. Vasfie was only 16 years old when she was taken from the arms of her mother by the Serbian military forces in the spring of 99. She was raped. They did not kill her because as she herself has testified, they explicitly told her, you will all suffer more if we keep you alive. Little did they know, Vasfie would grow up to become an incredible woman a mother of two beautiful daughters, 
and nearly two decades later, come back home stronger than ever, braver than ever, to teach all, us, to teach all, all of us a lesson about justice, a justice that was once denied to her, a lesson of perseverance, one about never giving up. For despite the best efforts to make her into one, Vasfia is not a victim. She is a hero. And heroes like her define my country. The lessons of war speak to us still, reminding us that progress must never be taken for granted. Kosovo has bared witness to the worst of humanity. We live in the depth of the dead, the wounded, the raped, and the missing. Remorse cannot do justice to such suffering. We believe that every act of aggression, terror, cruelty, and oppression must have repercussions, for hatred shall never prevail. As Kosovars, we have a responsibility to do better. We are determined to honor the lives that might have been by ensuring that their sacrifice was not made in vain. Their memory has fueled our transformation and empowered our sense of purpose. They have inspired our collective commitment to the sublimation of the dreams of the fallen and our persistent efforts to pursue a future of enduring peace and prosperity. We know that these ideals are not easy to achieve, but they are nonetheless worth striving for. However daunting the odds may be, and however big challenges may seem, you can rest assured, Kosovo will never give up. We are a young republic, one that is far from perfect, but also one that will not stop striving to become better for all its citizens, regardless of their ethnic or religious background. Because that is how we keep our promise to our children. This is the Kosovo we are fighting for.